Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are zooming in and we are focusing in on a question that I've been receiving an abundance of inquiries regarding female psychopaths and to really kind of go in depth a little bit more into the prevalence and the personality type of the female psychopath. Well, realize that a psychopath um, is not always the serial killer. Um, they are not always the uh, you know, the, the Bernie Madoffs of Wall Street. In fact, oftentimes, you know, psychopaths are portrayed as male because they tend to oftentimes have a lot of testosterone, a lot of aggression, and you hear kind of that cold-blooded serial this, that, and the other thing in the news. Yet, a lot of people don't realize that there are psychopaths in everyday walk of life. In fact, it's thought that one in 100 are psychopathic. And in certain... Um, sort of communities and work environments, particularly the Wall Street, the financials, um, and also, you know, other high, high ranking C-level executives, things of this nature are often psychopathic in nature on a higher incidence, one in 25. And this does not exclude women. Oftentimes women get off the hook because they just say that she was slighted, that she, you know, used the female card, that, um, you know, she was taken advantage of. She was sexually exploited. Um, you know, her charm was taken advantage of. And so the vulnerability of the woman is oftentimes taken advantage of and really undiagnosed or just overlooked. And a female psychopath is an individual who, namely, when we talk about psychopaths, just to keep it very uh, on, the, on the surfaces, these people, uh, these females do not have a conscience. So... They're not driven by integrity and a sense of moral right and wrong. They do not feel the same upset guilt that most people do. If there is an incidence of hurt, um, betrayal, violation, they don't have the attachment to others really the way that most of humanity does. So the conscience, which is part of the, um, the, the neural network, uh, really there's brain regions which are responsible for your conscience, which gives you a sense of right or wrong. It's basically, it's the, it's will stop you if you're crossing the line. It'll say, nope, I'm not doing that. That's wrong. It's so it's kind of a built in mechanism, if you will. Now there is slowed activity or lack of activity in brain scans of psychopaths in several regions. Um, particularly um, hypersensitive to dopamine, uh, which is the, uh, chemical responsible for the feeling of reward. So we see this hypersexualization and likewise this proneness to boredom and restlessness in the female psychopath that basically is going to keep them not only a busy body, but high energy and hypersexual. And there tends to be because of oftentimes a pronounced um, testosterone and these adrenalines and these hormones and this dopamine, these neurochemicals that tend to be very sensitive in the female psychopathic brain, which means once they go after something, they're going to keep on it. They're, they're not going to let up. And this oftentimes takes the effect of hypersexualization, which can be very rewarding to them. So the reward centers in their mind are very sensitive. So they tend to uh, release uh, quite a bit more and, and be, you know, basically sensitive to a lot more. So they are going to participate in hypersexual behaviors which a lot of men find endearing or charming or think this is the perfect woman when, you know, she's being very aggressive or, you know, um, being very risky, um, doing and saying things in very pro provocatively in restricted areas, you know, in public, um, in a park, um, in a workplace, you know, where basically you wouldn't expect these things to be said you wouldn't expect the sexual behavior to be exhibited, yet the female psychopath, because of their dopamine sensitivity and their heightened sense of dopamine in their reward system, they're going to engage in this, they're going to indulge themselves in this, while others oftentimes are afraid. While other people are really like, are you, you know, are you sure you want to do this? And then most men don't, they let it go. They tend to feel that they're so attractive by the psychopathic gaze that oftentimes these women have, which is very piercing and it very much feels like very seductive. And so you feel kind of this emanating energy coming off of them frequently. And um, many men do not 
find the ability to resist. Um, they can't really extract themselves. And so then, you know, um, this, they then feel like the man with a woman, you know, um, really taking charge or being very provocative in these ways. So it tends, it caused the man to then up his game and then really try to play that man card. Like I am the provider, you know, I am, you know, um, I'm attractive, I'm manly, I'm, you know, I've got the results going in my life. And so you just tend to continue on this and then, you know, open up that trust. And that trust can be like giving you the keys to the car, the key to the house, the key to the bank. I mean, you name it. Um, and oftentimes the woman will be very sabotaging um, because really the, the psychopath um, lacking in conscious, they, they tend to very much seek the destruction in the debilitating and the anguish and the depression. And really, I would just, I'm just going to say destruction. Um, of of their targets, uh, the people who they are focused in on and honing in on, they want to sabotage and smear and really destroy one financially. And they know the buttons to push. They know the things to do. They know the relationships to juggle. They know the things to say that really are, your, you know, they, they take advantage of the button pushing. Um, so they get men basically where it really hurts and um, get them oftentimes to be buying a lot of things to keep the relationship. I mean, they'll say, uh, they'll say things which are very depersonalizing and not call you by your name. Um, they'll call, you know, you by nicknames and, um, they tend to be, um, extremely kind of insensitive, um, where they can, you know, make, um, sort of, uh, projection, projected expectations of you, like, you know, um, that would make you uncomfortable, but that would make you feel like you should be doing this. Um, you know, of course, you know, you're going to let me do this. And like they project this expectation onto you. You know, of course, you're going to let me have a joint bank account. Of course, you know, you're going to do this. So they, they seem to be very insensitive to you, but they're very sensitive themselves. So when you approach them with questions, you know, inquiries, um, I'm not comfortable with that. You know, they're, they're going to feel and react oftentimes, sometimes with like a psychopathic rage that they are uncomfortable with, um, you know, with those statements and then feel like a victim. They're going to show you x-rays. They're going to tell you about their past relationships where they were done wrong, homeless, uh, you know, penniless, whatever their sob story is. Oftentimes they're, they're going to try to invoke that pity and get you to feel basically sorry for them. So then you will, um, you know, dole out more, dish out more and take advantage of that boundary violation within you that makes you feel like a man and feels like you just want to continue on the results path, which, you know, most men just, they just want to look at the results. They don't oftentimes want to go through the process. They don't want to analyze it. They just want to resolve it. So it's just kind of like they're, they just make an app, uh, you know, a shortcut to get you where it hurts. Um, so, um, you know, um, in terms of the, the brain structuring, there is, there is a lot of um, neural networks that are not active in the way that um, most people have in terms of a conscience. So the sense of right or wrong, um, the, si the sense of, um, you know, observing societal norms, um, things that are acceptable and unacceptable. And they get people to lower their boundaries, basically lower their threshold through the, the reward activity. So they'll simultaneously disrespect you under the guise of respect. So, you know, they'll, um, it's, and then you've got this cognitive dissonance going on, um, and the gaslighting and the brainwashing where they simultaneously, um, arouse you, but then insult you. Um, and a lot of men think that this is, you know, the things that they say, which are hypersexual can be, you know, um, tantalizing, but yet when they realize it becomes much deeper and then it becomes really a cocktail of really a, a lot of hormones within you that are responsible for gaslighting and then brainwashing and eventually the terror because you then begin <clears throat> to engage in a light of, um, you know, uh, sabotaging thoughts and, um, fearful thoughts that this person is leaving me and they're doing these things and then they doubt it. Um, and they're very good at hiding and concealing 
what they're doing on the side. Um, and they also t have a very high energy, hypersexual. So it's just, it's almost, it's almost superhuman. I just want to say that the amount of energy that these women will have to do and participate in a whole variety of, of different activities, jobs, personas, um, they'll p completely put on a show personally crafted according to what they think that you need uh, to hear and feel and the kind of woman, you know, that you need to have to feel like a man. So they're very good at reading people. And really, they just want one thing. And it's very parasitic in nature, whether it's uh, sex, money, a place to live, um, a job, your connections, or just, you know, the thrill of having destroyed you. Oftentimes is, is a sick pleasure that these women get. So be very careful and um, always remember that um, empathy is important in relationships and boundaries are important in relationships. Even though when you come together, there's a, a fusion of boundaries. And, you know, that's part of what love is, is, you know, you get to let go and release the boundaries. But yet, you know, you come back to you know, you come back to your reality and you have these boundaries and this respect in place. And um, that's how a psychopath will kind of break people down is through that hypersexualization, the things that they say, um, and oftentimes make men pay a very dear price for that. It's peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.